Welcome to another video. I posted this entertaining question in the community tab and I got a lot of responses. Some of them were funny, but many of them were correct. The answer to this problem is 4,500. So if you got 4,500, anyhow you got it, you were correct. Now, from what I was able to see, a lot of people had a very good understanding of how to do this. So in case you're out there, you find this entertaining or you find it puzzling or you don't know how exactly to go about it, there are four ways I'm going to show you how to find this answer and I hope it helps out. Let's get into the video. Method number one is what I call just intuitive reasoning. Okay, we have this license plate system. You're going to be using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 10 digits. Now, if I did not attach any conditions, without any conditions, no restrictions, you're going to have 10,000 license plates because you can put any number here of the 10 from 0 to 9. So you have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 10,000 license plates. So without restrictions, you have a maximum of 10,000 license plates. Then I tell you that the first digit cannot be zero. Well, if the first digit cannot be zero, you've eliminated 1,000 license plates. So now with the restriction, no minus 1,000. So now what we have left is 9,000 license plates. Now, I'm writing this as an accountant. <laughs> okay, now, so what happens to the remaining 9,000? Any number you pick is either even or odd. Remember that. <laughs> so the remaining license plates, if the sum of the digits, you take it, it is either it is even or it is odd. There are no options. Every number you get when you add anything up is either even or odd, unless it's zero where some people say we don't know if it's even or odd, but that's it. So half of these plates will be even and half will be odd and that's it. So we say half even implies we divide this by two. So, half even, half odd. Okay, let's do this. Half odd, we subtract 4,500. What is left will be 4,500. That is the accountant's method of solving this. Now, let's go to the mathematician's method of solving this. So, this is how a mathematician will reason this out. I want to put numbers in this to form my license plate. What are the rules you gave me? You said the first digit cannot be zero. So of the list zero to nine, I have to drop zero. I only have nine numbers that I can plug in here. So I have nine. Now I'm going to go to the second digit. Nothing about the second digit really calls for any attention. Anything can be there. And because there is repetition allowed, whatever number I've used here, I can also use here. And I can also use zero, so I have 10 options. The same thing here, I have 10 options, no restrictions. Now, I have to slow down. I cannot say I have 10 options here because if the number that I have, right now I have, nine I have 900, right? Now, for the last position, I must ask myself, do I have 10 options? No, because if currently the numbers I have arranged together, let's say I have 317 is the number I chose. I'm going to add 3 plus 1 plus 7 is going to give me 11, right? Is 11 an odd number? Yes. Well. I have to be careful what number I put here. I must put another odd number because the sum of two odd numbers will be even. So I cannot put an even number here. I am restricted to just one, three, five, seven, and nine. So I have five options in the last spot. Oh, 
What if it was even? Is the same reasoning. Suppose that this was not one; it was, say, six. If I add up the digits, I'm gonna get nine plus seven, which is sixteen. It's an even number. So how many options would I have if the first three are even? I will still have five options. I have to choose either zero, two, four, six, or eight. So I still have five options. So whether what I had, what I have here is even, or what I have here is the sum is odd, the third, the last option I have will have to be restricted to five. So our total is going to be nine times ten times ten times five, which is four thousand five hundred. By that reasoning, I did not want to write because there's another way you can do that. Now, what's another way you can go about this? And this one is what I think the teacher is looking for, because you're not expected to know this combinatorics method. You expect it to use arithmetic progression, or what you call arithmetic sequence. Okay, so we're going to have a sequence of numbers and Let's look at the question again. What is the very first number license plate with the smallest sum that you can accept in the sequence? Can you accept? And okay, so since we said the first digit cannot be zero, the first digit must be one for the smallest one. So it's gonna be one, zero, zero, zero. No, because when you add those up, you're gonna get an odd number, it's one. So the smallest license plate sum is going to be 2 because the first license plate, so using arithmetic sequence. So that's what we're going to be using. So we're going to say, hey, let's block this off. The first term is 1001. This is an acceptable license plate. 1002 is not acceptable. 1003 is acceptable because this one will give us a sum of two, which is even. 1002 will give us a sum of three, which is not even. So it looks like the next number is going to be 1003. Okay, so sequence is 1001, 1003, Tap, tap, tap. You keep going until you get to 9,999. That's it. The only question you want to ask yourself is how many terms are in a sequence where the first term is 1,001 and the last term is 9,999. We know that term n for an arithmetic sequence or arithmetic progression is equal to a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, where the term we're referring to, whichever term this is, we just pick it, is the first term multiplied by the number of terms minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. We know that the first term is what we call T, I'll call it T1, it's also A, and our A in this case will be 1001. So if you're in high school, this is what you're more likely going to present, okay? If you have done combinatorics or in um, further mathematics or advanced mathematics or number theory, this is what you might do. And if you're just um, someone who uses basic logic, this is what you might do, or if you're an accountant. Okay, in this case, we have it A is 1001. What else do we need? We know that. So we're gonna take the, this term, okay? We don't know what the term is, but it is the nth term, which is the last term. So we call it TN, it's gonna be nine, 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 nine. We just don't know what this n is, which is the number of terms, which is the number of license plates we're actually looking for. So tn is nine, 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 nine. What else do we not know? The common difference. What is the difference between this number and this number? What did we do to this? We added two. So every time you're gonna be adding two, d is equal to two. So we're gonna go back and use this formula and find what n is. 
So here we go. We have 9, 9, 9, 9 is equal to the first term, 1, 0, 0, 1, n minus 1 times 2, plus n minus 1 times 2. This is going to be equal to, um, we can actually move this over here and say this is going to be 9, 9, 9, 9 minus 1001 equals 2n minus 2. Okay, I distributed this. So if we do this subtraction, we're going to get 8, 9, 9, 8 equals, and we can move this 2 here, so we add 2, plus 2 equals 2n. Whoa, if we add 2 to this, we get 9,000 equals 2n, so that our n is 4,500. I'm sure there's another way you can reason through this. I said four ways, actually. What other ways? I think I must have combined two ways here. Okay, because that's the basic reasoning about it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.